All right, so we're looking at the early English colonization today, uh, and then we'll be looking at um, Puritan uh, colonization, which is also English, but there's really two separate ones. You have uh, what really uh, it kind of is designated by area. So you have the uh, Chesapeake uh, area, and then put this here for the English colonization Chesapeake. Uh, versus uh, the Puritan or, or New England area. And while both of these are English settlements, uh, it's very different uh, as far as sorry about that, uh, uh, how they develop. And so we're going to be looking at just, we're going to be looking at this one here, uh, and then we'll be looking at the next one within the Puritan development. So with the Chesapeake area, you have the English, um, reasons for the English to come over. And here's the thing with this is, you know, they were not as powerful as the Spanish at this point. And they weren't going to be able to compete directly, uh, just like the French, but weren't able to as well. And so part of the aspect was to... Um, try to figure out how to uh, be successful while not directly challenging the the Spanish. And one of the earliest things they did was actually not even come over, but we'll call it uh, sanctioned pirates. Uh, Queen Elizabeth allowed for individuals to attack the Spanish. And, and I mentioned that with the Spanish one. But that was one of the ways of trying to make money and 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 and, and hurt uh, the Spanish if they could. But as far as other reasons, um, <clears throat> they uh, there was actually it was presented um, to Queen Elizabeth as a kind of a list of of reasons, and one of them was of of course because of the land and the money that it could provide. You had that then uh, religion. And specifically to stop Catholicism, of course, to stop the spread of the Spanish. All, uh, one of the other things that they mentioned um, was that it would be economically beneficial, good, economically good for England. And most importantly, for... <laughs> Uh, maybe not most part, but certainly was emphasized a lot as one. Uh, they had soldiers that were somewhat idle and they didn't know what to do with them. And then you had um, what they basically called the wandering beggars and criminals. And they said, we, these are unwanted groups and we can get rid of them. And they can become profitable. So I mean, this was this is, and this is definitely some of the earliest people they sent over were those groups, and all these reasons, uh, uh, certainly to why they to get into it. Now, the earliest settlement I was, and I mean, now that it wasn't even successful. The earliest su successful settlement is going to be uh, Jamestown, but one of the first attempts was Roanoke. And Roanoke was different because it kind of showed uh, what some of the English were planning and, and it didn't work. So it was a, a, a failure. They actually didn't want to go to Roanoke. Roanoke was uh, uh, off of the coast. They were, they were actually going towards the, the Chesapeake area. The area was their goal. Instead, uh, they, in order to avoid the Spanish, ended up here. And what it was, I was families, and this is going to be, uh, you know, what's different. The fact that they brought over families. There was even a woman who was pregnant, and the main guy uh, that was going to be like the governor. He was the father of this woman and and his wife. He left him there. He stayed. I'm going to stay with the ship, go back to England, get more supplies in another boat, come back, pick you up, and then we'll go. We'll continue on to where we're supposed to be. Until then you know, establish and set up a camp here. And it wasn't just, I mean, it wasn't just his family. So it was several families and men and women. And so he left. It took uh, one year to get back. 
And when he got back, they were all gone. And there was no trace of them. Um, that, that mystery of, 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 uh, what happened there was on the the, the tr a tree was carved Kurotoa, which was uh a neighboring island outside of that though like he didn't have a lot of time the ship kind of forced him to to you know stay here by yourself or come back with us he did like um they did go to one of the islands but that was about it and then he had to leave and they we still don't know exactly what happened two theories are either one that they ended up getting murdered on a different island when they went to the other island um not that you know uh, they're always the nicest towards uh, the locals in the area, and if they pissed them off enough, they could have killed them. The other suggestion was that they got incorporated into a tribe. Uh, if they kept going and maybe decided, because the Roanoke was not ideal for farming for anything else. Um, and while they had a settlement set up there, uh, it probably found themselves with lack of food. And were forced to try to... Uh, the islands were pretty close together. So they could get a canoes and they could have gone. It wasn't like they were so far out that they wouldn't be able to get into the mainland. And so they probably thought, you know, tried to see if they could, uh, you know, migrate themselves over. And make their way to somewhere that would be more profitable as well as uh, livable. And the, so the potential is along the way when they were doing this, that either uh, ended up being... Um, attacked and killed or um they were incorporated into the tribe and just assumed that uh, he wasn't coming back um but that, i mean it's one of those kind of mysteries we don't actually know uh, we only can speculate so the first uh successful uh place was uh jamestown and this was definitely not families um, and, and was a different style and goal um, and, and of, of colonization. And this is where you see a clear difference between um, the Spanish and um, the um, English and the French. Uh, Jamestown um, was uh, set up. Um, with the goal of, of which was, was the Virginia Bay Company, um, and 1607-08 was the time frame. But the, how it was structured, and this became the foundation, was, uh, Virginia Bay Company. You had companies that got a charter from the king, the king is Queen Elizabeth is dead now, now it's King James, to be able to settle. And what they did is that they paid and brought over uh, mostly men initially, with only a very few women. And these were a, a variety of, of soldiers um, and workers. Um, they had a few, they had some, a few farmers, there was, and there was also some, some English gentry. So it was a weird mix of, of people. Um, <clears throat> okay, so soldiers, some farmers, you probably should have needed more of that. They had some, uh, noblemen and some skilled workers, like a blacksmith and jewelry. Okay, so it was kind of this weird mix of, of individuals that they brought over. And the idea was, is that these people would work and, uh, farm the land. Um, and, and ideally, uh, you know, make money through, uh, cash crops, uh, in order to, that would, well, mostly benefit the Virginia Bay Company because they pay for it. So work and make money on cash crops and settlement basically anything that they could trade with europe percentage a large percentage went to the virginia bay company and then another percentage uh, would go to england 
and a percentage. So what was left, a small percentage to the workers. So there's several problems with this early setup. Uh, one of, the first, of course, was Jamestown location. It was really a swampy area, which swampy area leads to uh, malaria <laughs> and mosquitoes. Um, so malaria, mosquitoes. Um, this, of course, is going to lead to a lot of disease. The other thing is they kind of self-sabotaged. They dumped uh, garbage and waste upstream of river, which, of course, means it flows right past you. And if you're using that as drinking and other types of water that you need, you're just contaminating, um, yeah, your own water. So not so smart uh, in that case. All of these things create disease and death. Out of the, um, uh, the 104 that had shown up initially, uh, over half had died, um, including the first two women that had been there. And... Um, they brought more, uh, over 400 people on some of the next trips. And ultimately, uh, after a long winter, only 65 remained. So you ended up with what was called the starving time period. And this was due to, as was mentioned, right? Uh, and starving time um <clears throat> took place uh 1610 but I mean, really you know you could do 1609 to 1610 as far as time period but so the starving time period you had a, a a bad winter you have disease and then you had a people poor workings um not skills poor working ethics <laughs> Uh, and here's the crazy thing with this is that they had a hard time getting people to work. Um, and there's part of the reason that they had a hard time getting people to work, right, is that there was not a lot of incentive. I mean, okay, yes, there is incentive to survive, right? That, that should have been the key thing right there. But the, because the money member went to the Virginia Bay Company. Went to the Virginia Bay Company, right? Not, not really them. So many people went looking for gold uh, or just refused to work more than a few hours. And then of course there are people sick uh, and and I mean, this wasn't the only threat reason, right? You had people that were super sick and dying, disease. You had most of the population die. Um, during the starving time period, we know that some resorted to cannibalism. <clears throat> they have, there was on record of one man who was killed um, because he killed and ate his wife. So that one... Uh, And killed and his wife, and he was actually then, uh, they he was tried and and killed for his crimes, mostly because he killed his wife. And I mean, he ate it because it was public. But there were they we know that there were additional cannibalism more often once someone died. So they didn't kill someone for to eat them, um, but they found other bones recently. They, they, the, the, the one with the man, uh, it was on record. They'd recorded it and put it in the notes. And so we've known about that one for a while. But what they recently discovered not that long ago is when they were doing a dig, they found some more bones and it clearly had human, like, gnaw marks on the bones. Like, they had eaten it. And it dated to the, around that time. So we know that actually um, that there was more cannibalism going on than previously thought. But, I mean, people were starving. 
Um, they didn't have good enough food. So the food that had been brought over in barrels, some of it had ended up spoiling. And they didn't do a good job of, of, of ultimately preparing enough in advance um, <clears throat> to make sure that they were going to be able to uh, survive. And so this created a, a huge problem uh, by that. And uh, ultimately, by 1616, over 80% of the, of the uh, colonists who had been brought to Jamestown had died. So um, you had, all right, we'll put that here. 1616, over 80% of colonists brought to Jamestown. Had died, so uh, high mortality rates. Uh, Jamestown wasn't super successful. The the um, the early fort, right? If here's the river, right? They the fort was like this kind of triangle shape thing. It was a dump. They had towers. Okay, I, think I can draw that just slightly better here. There you go. So you had. Tower points here, and then I mean this was the fence. It was a fort. You know, it's called Jamestown, but it it was it was this is, this is Jamestown, James River. But this this really was a fort, and it was uh, pretty crappy. Um, the homes and everything else were in here. Um, and it was, this is swamp land. And this was just a muddy mess. <laughs> uh, it, it looked crappy. It looked unsanitary. It wasn't a fun place to live. It was, it was, it was horrible. What happens is, uh, you know, what, why does it become successful? what changes because obviously we know that it becomes more successful well, one of the things is that eventually uh people stop dying um from uh stopped uh high death rate so people still died due to this disease people that did survive and had children um, managed to survive they were able to eventually um, so that that was that was a big part of it uh, and, and we'll look at it in a minute they certainly did get help from the local um, Native Americans for surviving um, some of the harsher winters um, and being in trade as well as just uh, helping them uh, not completely perish. But the big thing that changed is how the uh, Virginia Bay Company worked. What they realized is that uh, worked. Uh, what they realized is that the system they had where they're expecting people to work for really no personal long-term gain wasn't going to cut it because people just were not invested in really wanting uh, I mean, why bother essentially. And so they changed the system to provide individual land ownership. And they're going to create then the uh, indentured servants and the head right system. Um, this. Oh, and the development of a cash crop is necessary for all of this to come in. So you you change actually so we put we should put cash crop as here. There you go. So what they did is you change really the whole system um that that's going on um, during this period, what people, so it's important, of course, that people stop dying from the disease because you're never going to be overly successful if 
Uh, they just keep dying with that. The Virginia Bay Company, so you switch to individual owner land ownership and indentured servants to help uh, uh, run the land with a headright system and a cash crop, which is going to be tobacco, which allows them to um, <clears throat> be successful and make money. And then this allow this this you know the domino effect of things. People want to cultivate the land and live there. Now tobacco also had. Uh, so where this comes from is this actually connects to a different section. We'll come back and talk about um, indentured servants and the head right system in a minute. Um, let's see what number we're on. Five is the um, local is Powhatan. And the local, um, well, he was the chief as well as this the tribe. And uh, the story of Pocahontas, which certainly gets uh, disseminated throughout culture on what was going on. So when they arrived uh, early on, the Powhatan um, was the main chief. Of several tributary uh, tribes so it was like a, a similar similar to a, like confederation to a degree in a sense but but uh, more militaristic and certainly um, forceful um, say forceful and militaristic in order to consolidate his rule Um, which certainly, uh, oops here, sorry. He was a strong leader and expected people to pay tribute to him. Tributary states, so how the tributary states work or tribes, and this is, is anywhere. <laughs> is you pay tribute, thus the tributary state. And tribute usually involves money and uh, men for military. Now there's not a former military, but what, it, and of course it requires loyalty to that. And so, you know, that creates a good, uh, strong number. He had uh, 30 uh, tribes under his control. So it was impressive and uh, certainly uh, po powerful um, by that. And he was chief at this time. What he saw uh, when, so I mean, the size to 30 tribes, they, they, they said the area had around 15,000 to uh, 25,000 uh, Native Americans in the area. So Jamestown people don't look threatening uh, by any means. In fact, what he saw was uh, the people of Jamestown as a potential tributary tribe, essentially. And they did, you know, they had some stuff that could be useful uh, to him. And, uh, they started out started out friendly. Certainly the English had pointed out, right? They, they were, you know, aware of the Spanish reputation. The goal was to, um, essentially avoid that. Plus, they were far outnumbered. I mean, uh, no chance of of attacking. I mean, there was they were at the mercy of the local people there. They they weren't gonna. They didn't come up with any force um, that was gonna be able to do anything at all. And in fact, the first couple of years, um, first couple of years were pretty peaceful. 
They were no, they were no threat. Um, Powhatan ends up working with John Smith, who was a, a military captain, who ends up kind of being the the governor. And they trade for food. And Powhatan wants weapons. And it wasn't, in, you know, it, it was mostly peaceful. More importantly, they did provide food uh, to get the colonist through a couple harsh winters. I, so, I mean, they were important to survival. They traded, they worked with them. That's not going to, now that... Where the problem is going to emerge is problems start as Jamestown gets bigger. Right. The issue is, is of course, that they start getting larger and expanding. More people show up. Not everyone's friendly. They aren't also starving anymore. They're being starting to be successful. Um, and, and so this is going to start creating conflict between, um, uh, various groups that both of the groups and there's, you know, they, that, the, at some point, some of the people in Jamestown ended up killing some of, of, of the Indians in a Powhatan's tribe and they retaliate. And so you have this conflict in the center of all of this, um, is... Pocahontas. And Pocahontas was Powhatan's daughter. And often described as his favorite uh, daughter slash child. And she there okay, there are a lot of stories about Pocahontas and um, it's mixed in with uh, myth versus reality versus how she was used and propagandized. So all of this kind of, uh, you know, takes into to how, what happens with the structure of that. All right. So with Pocahontas, um, <clears throat> was a daughter and she definitely interacted and was involved with the Jamestown. Um, we don't know exactly, you know, with Jamestown. We don't know exactly how much, you know, the, the myths, what you end up is with kind of like Christopher Columbus, you know, there's this massive myth versus reality. Of, of Pocahontas. And the, the myth, the story of, of it is certainly, um, uh, well, gosh, the, the best example of that is, is, is Disney's uh, Pocahontas. It fits all of the conditions of this. She, um, they have her be older too. She was young when they showed up. She would have been a kid, uh, nine, eight or nine. Um, but, you know, they have her older she learns English and helps out the the settlers, falls in love with John Smith, saves, saves his life, falls in love with James Smith, and, you know, the Disney version, everything's great. <laughs> um, that's kind of the myth of Pocahontas. The reality was much more, uh, ends up being much more bleak in the, in the process, but she did get involved, um, with... Um, Jamestown to a degree a lot of um, she does she ends up getting used though the reality is that Pocahontas is is used for politics um, as a, a barrier a shield uh, as protection and for promotion. What happens is ultimately tensions rose uh, between 
the colonist um, through the years and that looked like at one point it was going to be an all-out war. And so the colonists knew that uh, Pocahontas was a, a favored daughter of Powhatan and they figured that if they uh, kidnapped her, um, then she would, um, they, he wouldn't attack. Now, some of what suggests that she actually had, was already married to uh, someone in her tribe. And had a baby. Uh, and what they end up doing is that the colonists kidnap her. Um, and uh, taken, uh, ca captured and taken hostage. So, uh, the, with, the, with, uh, and again, what, how much we know and don't know for sure, but the, 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 some of the stories were that she was married and she had a baby and that the baby, um, was left with the tribe and she was taken hostage. She stayed on a ship for a little bit and then ultimately in Jamestown so that they wouldn't, he wouldn't attack. Uh, while there, um, the English version of course is that she converted to Christianity and ended up marrying John Rolf, not uh, not Rolf, Rolf, not John Smith. And he, she married John Rolf for uh, two reasons. The first was um, diplomatic. If there was a marriage between the two groups, then they would be allies rather than uh, enemies. The other was John Rolf. wanted uh tobacco recipe if you will tobacco information because they had a better um line than the colonist tobacco and so if he was married pocahontas then he would have access to that and um it ended that standoff essentially now you know there's there's other stories where that she was uh forced to convert her her christian name became rebecca she was forced to convert, um, was somewhat brutalized while taken hostage, and then forced to marry John Rolfe. Uh, whether forced to be married, John Rolfe could have gone both ways. Women often both uh, in, in, in Native American uh, groups, especially w uh, women who were uh, part of the chief's family, often were married off for political reasons. So that part, the marriage part, isn't so abnormal nor surprising. Um, you know, it's more, it's more what else was going on uh, when she was, she was captured and taken hostage and all this other stuff. So, you know, that alone was, you know, not necessary. She probably was never a willing party or a independent party where she was making any of these choices here, even the conversion and marriage. Ultimately, at uh, around 19, she was uh, taken with, um, with uh, Rolf to England. And she was taken to England very specifically to show off. And more specifically uh, to show that Indians could be civilized. Right? That was what they're doing. They showed her to, you know, here, look, they can be civilized. They can learn our language and they can become Christians. And so this is a thing. She does have, she has a child with Rolf. And then, um, but ends up dying, gets sick and dies on the way back to colony, to Jamestown. Um, so she dies at a very young age, uh, doesn't ever make it back to her home. Powhatan was devastated. Uh, and it supposedly said that he kind of withdrew um, after that. Um, and, um, you know, just, he, he died the, net, the following year. So he died a year later. Powhatan died. 
this next year. Um, and some say it was because of that, that, that grief and heart heartache after his death, you're going to get a more conflict between colonists. And Indians, and, the, and of course, one of the reasons Powhatan wasn't there, um, but they're expanding, the colonists are expanding. Um, there's going to be, uh, as with before, issues with land and ownership, um, and who should be able to have it, and then of just, of course, the general view of, of, of English superiority and justification for doing so. Um, so that's that's the story. What Pocahontas also, and I wanted to show you some of these pictures, was really used as propaganda. Um, and images that came up later, images at the time, how she's been used through the years, has really been within this propaganda sense. So what we have... Okay. There we go. Didn't want to go over. Um... This one is uh, was actually commissioned while she was in England um, and has a Rebecca, daughter to the mighty Prince Powhatan. Uh, I mean, it, it just is kind of a crazy image of just how unnatural it looks. Uh, um, she certainly doesn't look happy, although posing for that and this kind of get up wouldn't be particularly comfortable anyway. Um, but this was what you could kind of say as the ideal... ideal English concept of uh, civilized Indians, right? They, in, in all sense, um, in all ways, they become as English as possible, right? She has what a close name, religion, uh, consequently language. Um, just, I mean, all cultural components. Uh, it was, it was the only thing that she couldn't do is become white. But outside of that, in all areas of which you could become English and transform to that, this this for the English, right, was the ideal. This is what it can become, kind of thing. Okay. Um, no, we're gonna save changes. Go to the next one. Here is the classic uh, one with the myth. All right here, you have. Nope. What are we doing? We're not sharing. So oh, here you have, you know, Pocahontas. Saving John Smith. This didn't happen. Uh, most likely. Most likely did not happen. Earlier writings of, of John Smith here. Uh, he doesn't mention it at all. Or really heard too much. Everyone knew who Pocahontas was. And, and there was a brief mention. But not like personal contact. Later. So... His early writings, no mention of this stuff. <laughs> but when he goes to write a book, all of a sudden, you know, Pocahontas is, is, saves him. He's more of the hero. I mean, you know, come on. <clears throat> not super surprising in that sense. So this is definitely that scene where Powhatan, this is Powhatan and the council members are getting ready to execute him and she steps in and saves him. The images are interesting in and of itself. If you look at some of the evolution and style of how Pocahontas is shown here in much more traditional Native American garb with uh, you have a breast exposed, half wearing clothes, feathers in the hair, you know, traditional dress, all of these things um, 
play a role. It's also interesting that they're gonna. There's some evolution if you look at the dates and order of when things were done and how they're showing her. Uh, the color of her skin too lightens uh, with time. Okay, there's that one. Right. Here's another one. This is a later one. And again, look now you still have some feathers, some traditional Native American, and the peace pipe. Oh. This is interesting with this, right? That they show this a lot because she's used for uh, promotion and propaganda to uh, basically she represents a lot of things, but peace because she did to them. I mean, that's it's not that's not completely crazy to think about because she did in the sense that by the marriage and that it did create a, a peace uh, and a period of, of safety. So that's not right, but it, it is interesting to note that this is often shown. It also um, will say what shows Native American uh, characteristics, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, but with this one, if you look at her actual dress style, this is very English European. So she looks less Indian in this later photo than the previous one, than when saving John Smith. Again, so it's interesting the evolution and how that changes and what's going on um, <clears throat> and how they're showing it. Okay, so there's nope, not gonna say change on that one. I suppose I could, but it. And then here, well, there's two. I couldn't find the other one. Um, and and uh, this one's a later one. And they did make her darker skin again. There's another one where she looks white. Um, <clears throat> let me see, actually. Let's see if I can go. Pocahontas. In oh, perfect. Here we go. I just didn't search well. All right, let's make a little. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> make this one big. This, so this one is Pocahontas being presented towards King James. And we actually see, so we can see there's two of them here. Uh, there's this one and then this one. This is the more, uh, uh, I think, shown uh, one. And it is later, right? These are later. These are not being drawn uh, during the 1600s. The only one that's from that time period is this one. So this one is from that time period. And this is, you know, what specifically done uh to promote her but again later we have this is fully let's go around the picture in my space english dress there is 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 no indian uh connection characteristics right the feathers or the peace pipe She's even her hair, but in the other ones tends to be a little bit of that. And no, you've got full dress meeting the king. And this, this again is very much to say, look, they can be civilized. See, um, so in this picture, you if someone didn't say, hey, this is Pocahontas, let's say they didn't put this on here, beep, and they just you just saw this picture, you wouldn't know that was Pocahontas. You wouldn't even necessarily know it was Native American at all, that she was Native American. It, it, you know, slightly darker skin, I suppose. But outside of that, it's not obvious. Um, nor necessarily even, let's go back to that other one, right? This one. Uh, I, don't, I don't, there's no, there's nothing that, that indicates that. And that was the point. The point of these was, is, is, is interesting, showing this kind of progression as she becomes more and more connected to the colonists, removing her otherness uh, and that cultural identity as Native American or from the Powhatan tribe. They didn't see themselves as a universal Native American group yet or Indian, but from her tribe. And instead taking on English characteristics. And this is how she was used and promoted. And then later... Uh, used for, and there was a couple of these, 
This was to sell stuff, right? This is tobacco. This is a tobacco brand, and there were two, right? So this is Pocahontas, Saving John Smith. Uh, was one well, Powhatan brand and and Pocahontas brand. They had they had two different ones, and again, these are a little bit later. One go one is from the 1950s, so you have you have all the way into the 1950s, uh, Pocahontas uh, being used to sell stuff. And I mean, you so this this legacy that's just, I mean, I, I guess the the key with this is she's just utterly and completely used in the process. Okay, so that's that's Pohan and Pocahontas. Now I wanted to get back to uh, what number are we on? Six, the indentured servants, and what happens there. And actually, there's two indentured servants and we'll actually go to tobacco brides. And I want to talk about them first. So wrong order, but sorry, we'll do it that way. So tobacco brides. Tobacco brides were uh, free indentured servants and actually happened during indentured servants too. So the colony becomes tobacco based. And that's an important part is, is why they're called tobacco as Jamestown and, and, and the Virginia area. Jamestown, Virginia area. The cash crop is tobacco. This is what they get, you know, send back to England. And you have, you so they create plantations and this makes a ton of money. And in fact, tobacco becomes essentially the money at that time. They don't have a lot of, uh, cash as we would call it right um you used you traded in tobacco and people became incredibly wealthy and well off in the process but the one thing um that they were lacking in the area is very few women and so not surprisingly there was a desire to push for more women and so how they did this is through tobacco brides they brought over women um, that the uh, various companies paid for women to come over to get married and they promoted it and and there was it wasn't just whoever random people at first it, they actually had to have uh, written recommendations in some cases they had to have a male escort. Most were unmarried. There was with a few, a few widows. Again, this is early on. It is going to change later. They're both their uh, expectation, everything else like that. Um, and again, the goal was to marry. And why they were called tobacco brides. The misconception, and definitely read those two articles that uh, I put up there for you. The, the misconception was, of course, that they were bought or something like that. But that's not exactly how it worked. The companies paid for it. They set them up. They they housed them if they, they get married. Essentially, you got off the boat and the goal was to find a husband. Um, you, they would talk with the different available men. And they were fully involved in or right, women's is clear women were fully involved in all of this in who they married they talked to the men um they got to know them and if they found some already had it set up but if they didn't so uh some already set up before they left like England others met and uh, talked with we'll say the suitors once they found someone they're married they made a marriage contract and part of that after they got married is that the husband now paid the company 150 pounds 
average. So sometimes it's 120, sometimes a little bit more of tobacco to cover travel expenses. Right, because they the women didn't pay for their way here. That's, that's the key. And so the, the tobacco brides, why they got called tobacco brides was because of this, right? That, so that's why tobacco brides. One, they were largely marrying, uh, but they were paid in tobacco. And then also, and married tobacco farmers. I mean, so both of those things, but it, they weren't bought where the women had no choice in the, in the, in the early period. In, in one of the readings in your voices of freedom, even talks about like, we desire that they be married and they don't be forced to marry someone. They, they don't marry servants. They're well means because this, what this, what's interesting with this is that the, it's a chosen importance and recognition of how important women were. Women were essential to the survival of the colony. And they knew it, which is why early women that got there, early tobacco brides or other women had a lot of freedom and choice they often became quite wealthy on their own right. And part of the reason that that happened was because they often got oh, lag here. They got to uh, make a lot of conditions in the marriage contract. Sorry. Okay. And so that, I mean, that, that played a huge role. It made a lot of contributions to the marriage contract or if they were widowed, because if you, um, if the, if you survive childbirth, women tended to outlive their husbands and then they get remarried and they still could control a lot of their wealth and stuff that way that they otherwise didn't have. And this ended up being wealthy. And part of the, why all of this is connected to this, this is, um, was with the Femme Covert and Femme Soul, which I think I mentioned, but Femme, uh, Femme Covert, essentially in Femme, Femme Soul was when you were a widow or single and it allowed for you to have some control of property or wealth by necessity. Right, women had to survive, and if they didn't have a male figure, then they had to be femme soul. Femme couvert was when you were married. And let's go down here. All identity and property was husbands. Everything, your name, right? That's why I'm, when you get married, Mr. and this is John Smith, if you will. The woman's name just becomes that. Um, all your wealth, any property, rights, political identity. You didn't have one outside of your husband's. What is important for this is that essentially you have, well, two things. So being widowed, widowed and the necessity and importance of women early on, it, this, what it did is it allowed women to subvert the thin Colbert, specifically through uh, marriage contracts and opportunities that they otherwise, they don't have later. And we, and, and we know that certainly you see as more women 
Okay, so what happens, what, what, what we see with this is when uh, population ratio is more even between men and women, women lose a lot of freedoms and independence in the colonies. And then they spin, spend rest of time trying to get them back. So this was important for women to have that. Now what happens is that where I mentioned, right? Um, B. This all was happening early on and it gets worse later. And you have indentured servants. And um, we'll see how, in a minute, how tobacco brides got into that. So indentured servants were a different function. Essentially, you could, for, for people who could not afford The travel they would come over as indentured servants and indentured servants were you had plantation owners who paid for their travel and this is going to get connected to the head right system of encouraging because again what happens is the like Virginia Bay Company and others don't want to pay for people anymore so they're gonna get the plantation owners to do it the head right system what it said is if you paid for someone to come over one, you got a worker. The early contracts uh, were uh, two to five years. The later contracts, it was, it was always better to come earlier, but you were more likely to die, I guess, with the early contracts because people were still dying five to seven years. So you got a worker for two to five years or five to seven years that had to work for you. And you, um, with the, the head right system, you also got 50 acres of land. Um, so if you pay, it, this also worked if you paid for your own passage. If you paid for your own passage, you got 50 acres of land. So this was paid for yours or someone else's. Just if you paid for someone else's, you also got them as, a, as an indentured servant. Now, why was it been, why would people come over? Well, one, so as an indentured servant, you had to work. Um, so why would someone do this? Obviously it works for the workers. So yes, your, but your travel was paid for. And for some people, they were never going to get over if they didn't have someone pay for it. Yes, you did have to, to work for five to seven years. But, but then after that time, when you were freed, you also got 50 acres of land and tools to help you start off. And then of course the ideal was that they would become a plantation owner or at least a good or farmer and have indentured servants themselves. This worked again early on, just like tobacco brides. This wasn't a bad plan. You worked, you got free, you got land. And then you had a potential for livelihood and success that you otherwise wouldn't have had. And for many, this worked well early on. However, the problem was just like with uh, uh, later, 
uh, you had both for indentured servants and tobacco brides. Conti conditions got worse. Um, for tobacco brides, say brides, um, they were less picky about who came over. And there were less men needing or wanting wives. Right as the population increased. And if you didn't find a husband in set time, you became an indentured servant. And the thing was, this is not how early tobacco brides started at all. And eventually the tobacco brides just completely dies out and it just goes to indentured servants. Right now for the indentured servants, um conditions worsened so um the, there was the contract with the the indentured servants were that they were supposed to be treated uh they were supposed to have shelter and food and you know clothing essentially basic necessities and these were remember english citizens But the basic necessities, this could be manipulated. And there were various levels of, of, of quality. Um, so this totally depended on even if you had enough of, of the basic necessities, right? The other thing was they started making fines for infractions. Um, so that, and the fines were almost always increased time on labor contract. The, because the reality was, is that the goal, the, 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 the farmers realized, well, if I can just keep them longer, I can make more money. Um, and what you really do see is a move to, uh, more permanently. Uh, keep indentured servants under contract and we're going to talk we're going to talk about um the evolution and shift to african slavery and so we're going to get into more detail with this later so that's that's where we're going to end with um that but what you have economically in the system with virginia uh starts off very much single men not very successful, then moving to individual land and cash crops and successful. And then at that point, you see the shift to them wanting to stay and bringing in women and trying to settle down. Um, so that's the, the early system of English colonization. Um, we're going to we'll look a little bit more with, uh, I mean, the conflict with the Indians is that there are some wars and fighting and that's going to be perpetual and continue as far as... Um, dealing with expansion into their property, you know, purchasing property, but, uh, you know, not really honestly. Um, and, and, and there's, like I said, various different ways. And we'll look at that too, of how they deal with that. So the next time we're going to be looking, we'll look at that as well as, um, the Puritans and the transition, um, to African slavery will be in a, in a future lecture from that.